This lesson will show you how to create a window and draw a line of text into it. The window is displayed as a frame object, just as we did with the previous lesson that displayed a label. In fact, this class is identical to the one that displayed the label, with a single exception that a text1 object is displayed instead of a label object. Here a declaration is made for the location that is to hold the address of the text1 object. And here, the actual text1 object is created. And finally, just as we did earlier with the label object, the text1 object is added to the frame for display. Then the pack and show methods are called. So the only question that comes up is just what is a text1 object? Well, it's not part of the standard library like the label was. This is a class of our own. It's a very simple class. A canvas object is a displayable component, just like a label, except the canvas object doesn't do anything but provide a blank window and permission to draw graphics of our own. So, the text1 class extends the canvas class and adds a method to draw a single line of text. The paint method is called by Java whenever the text1 object needs to be displayed. That is, whenever the text1 window first appears, the paint method is called to draw the content of the window. The paint method is called again whenever the window changes sizes or is uncovered from behind another window or anything else happens that makes it necessary to redraw the window. All right, here's what happens. Inside Java, it's determined that for whatever reason, the window needs to be displayed. The window's cleared, if it isn't already clear, and a graphics object is created. This graphics object contains the information on the window itself and all the methods and information you need to draw things to the window. Then a call is made to the paint method of the text1 object so the content of the window can be drawn. In a future lesson, we're going to be looking into more detail on calling methods and passing things to them, but for right now, just be aware that a graphics object is being passed to the paint method, and that we've assigned a local name of G to the graphics object. We could have made up any local name we want, but I like to use G because it's short, and the graphics object is uh, used a lot inside the paint method. In this method, we don't do much in the way of graphics. We leave the background and foreground colors to whatever the default happens to be. We don't even check the window size or specify the font. We just display a string of text at a fixed location. Now, to specify the location of an item to be displayed, it is necessary to specify its X and Y position. The X position, which is the horizontal location, is the number of pixels from the left side of the window. The Y location is the vertical position. It's the number of pixels down from the top of the window. In this example, the location of the string is 50 pixels from the left and 100 pixels from the top. The constructor of the Text1 class has only one statement. It's a call to set size. This method is of the canvas class, so it's inherited by text1. Actually, the canvas class inherited the method from the component class because the canvas class extends the component class. Anyway, the set size method specifies the original size of the window. Now, these two classes can be compiled with a single statement, like so. This command will actually compile every Java program in the current directory. You could just as well compile each class individually from the command line, but I kind of like to hand them all to the compiler and let it sort things out. Anyway, we wind up with a source file and a class file for each of our classes, and you can look at them with a dir command like this. Now we should be able to run the program with a single command like this. and the window appears. Notice that it's not necessary to use an import statement in this case because the text1 class is in the same directory. 
Java will always look in the current directory to find names that you use. The import statement is only necessary if you want Java to find classes stored in other locations. Now, notice what happens here. If we expand this window, notice that the text always appears in the same location in relation to the upper left corner of the window. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to be looking into detecting the size of the window and positioning the text accordingly.